What's up, YouTube? You got OG here looking at a brand new Vision Hero coming out of Collector's Pack 17 called Vision Hero Witch Raider. And the first thing to note is this card is actually female. And it's really not that big of a deal, but I think it's kind of important because when I think of heroes historically, almost all the good ones have been male. And it feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity. Like, just think of off the top of your head all the great heroes throughout time. You'll probably start with Stratos and Malicious, work yourself through like Bubble Man, Neos Alias, Fearmonger, Disc Commander, cards like that. And the one great female card that you might come across is probably like a Shadow Mist. Obviously, Shadow Mist is a chick, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is like Diamond Dude and a whole bunch of other guys. And it, you know, feels like the females haven't been quite up to par. So it's good to see them get more female support. Now, she is level eight, which is kind of weird because ain't nobody got time to be tribute summoning and any type of hero builds. In fact, the only level eights that people have ran historically that have been heroes or cards like Plasma or a Dreadmaster, but those cards were not only able for you to special summon them, but they were mainly used because they were both trade-in and destiny targets and Allure Darkness targets at the same time. So it's like, if you got those cards in your hand, you had three different outlets that you can, you know, use to get rid of them and draw extra cards. So those cards really weren't used for their own filled purposes. They were just kind of used as like fodder to go through the rest of your deck. Now, she does have an effect that lets you circumvent being able to, or circumvent tribute summoning you know not that you'd want to ever get rid of uh, monsters on your board but yeah she has an effect that makes it a little easier to get her on the board so let's go ahead and look at what she does first thing is she does have a great stat line 2700 attack 1900 defense that's very solid for a level 8 monster and it makes her level 8 feel not quite as bad and the first effect does kind of set you up so that you won't have to probably give up any of your monsters to summon her you contribute trap cards for the tribute summon of this card and face up attack position this is really good and I think that it does give her a little playmaking ability. I probably wouldn't use her in like Monarchs. Uh, you know, obviously you have like uh, the Prime Monarch, but I just think that Mobius is probably better in, in every regard because you can reduce the level. Actually, you know what? Let me read the effect and then you'll kind of understand why I'm saying that. When this card is normal summoned, you can destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. During the turn you activate this effect, you cannot special summon monsters except hero monsters. So if you're playing her in a hero deck, it probably won't be that big of a deal. Although, I don't know, when I think of hero decks right now, probably the best one is still mass heroes with like totally awesome and whatnot. And all your traps do in that deck is kind of protect the monsters that you have on field. Protect your totally awesome and your dark loss. So you're probably going to need those. You're not going to need any more. More additional offense especially if you have bahamut shark which can pump out another totally awesome during your following turn so this is not a deck where i would probably play her in and there is obviously the option of you know playing like call of the haunted and oasis of the dragon so those can trigger shadow miss and then later you can just you know use this uh use those cards for a or a tribute summon of her but i think where you might want to use her is maybe in the side deck of a deck like uh, true dracos and i say that because true dracos have two traps that when they're sent from the field to the graveyard, they can actually kind of act as MST. So not only can you tribute those and uh, easily get her on the field and like feather dust through your opponent, but that is not a deck that is required to really special summon at all. That deck runs Pot of Duality and some people run like um, uh, Card of Demise and stuff like that. So I don't think that you really need your special summon all that much in true Dracos. So I don't really think that her effect of making it so that you can't special summon except, uh, what's it called, except Hero Mon I don't really think that'll be that big of a deal, although maybe it's too much of a good thing if you're tributing for a bunch of MSTs, it's like, how much would you really even need the Feather Duster at all at that point? But I think that if you're going to attempt to run her, I think True Dracos is probably your best option, only in the side deck, obviously. And, you know, her being level 8, I believe there are a couple of True Dracos, or at least one True Draco that is a level 8. So, you know, maybe there's some XC plays there as well. Overall, I think that this card will just kind of be a niche card. It, it's difficult to, in my opinion, fit this into Heroes because, heroes have never really worked on tribute summoning so i do think it's kind of weird to make a card that kind of is like very high level and works on traps if you've got a bunch of face down traps and you're ahead of your opponent you know feel free to try and summon her i just think at that point you really wouldn't even need the offense chances are whatever monsters you already have on the board would probably already beat your opponent so i mean maybe she's a side deck option if you're playing like a very super control version of heroes but I mean, I maybe, I mean, I guess there are other applications. I mean, fuck, I guess you could, you could 
maybe play her in like Paleozoics. Keep in mind that the traps can be set. So, you know, you could play her in Paleozoics and give up a couple of traps and feather dust to your opponents. And then later you could probably activate things like Lost Wings, uh, Lost Wings, <laughs> Lost Winds and bring those back. So actually, now that I think about it, maybe she's a possibility in super heavy back row decks. And, uh, you know, Paleozoic might not die if it can't special summon that turn as long as it has a feather duster type card, which would be pretty big for the deck. So I think she's okay, but she's mainly just a side deck card. I can't really see anybody ever running this in the main deck because I don't know, you run into a deck that doesn't use much back row, like the grass looks greener deck, and you know, she'll be kind of SOL, she'll be a dead card. So let me know what you guys think of her and uh, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already.